Hi folks, it's me Ali again, sharing with you the rest of the story. After returning from the beautiful city of Vienna and the ESC meeting, I spent a couple of days back home in Boston, but turned around and went directly to Montreal to present at the Canadian Academy of Endodontists, which was being held this year in the beautiful resort of mont -Tremblant. I was scheduled to give a three-hour presentation to this prestigious group of endodontists in Canada with a great and rich history uh, rivaling our own AAE meeting. Now, mont -Tremblant is truly a beautiful resort about an hour and a half or two hours outside of Montreal. It's a great ski resort during the wintertime, but here in late September is pretty much full of late summer activities. Unfortunately, however, I never got a chance to see much of the outside of the hotel room and why I don't have much footage to share with you. And here's the story of why. As is often the case, I try to pick up two to three clinical cases from my office the day before my trip to talk about them during the presentation. Now, these were really run of the mill cases and nothing real extraordinarily. I, I usually do this so that I can talk about some real world cases that you see on daily practice, not, not just extraordinary cases. So I did these three consecutive cases on Tuesday before traveling to Canada and giving the talk on Friday. This time, however, I got ambitious and instead of just taking a bunch of x-rays as I usually do, I got this crazy and ambitious idea of recording each procedure fully and then showed the clinical videos for the whole case to the audience. I figured after producing and editing over 500 videos, including many documentaries and music videos that you don't know about, I'm pretty fast at editing and producing these little things and why not? Why not just do it? Well, it turned out that it was a much bigger undertaking than I had bargained for because of the limited time frame that I had from, you know, Tuesday afternoon and then ready to deliver on Friday morning. I ended up editing two full days, including throughout the flight to Canada. I even had to rent an Uber ride from the airport to mont -Tremblant instead of driving myself, only to use a two hour drive time to edit while sitting in the back seat, which turned out to be a disaster and a recipe for motion sickness. I nearly threw up on my laptop. I made it anyway to mont -Tremblant and still had to edit for the rest of the day in my hotel room. I was finally ready at midnight before my talk. Thankfully, the event went very well and everyone uh, was super kind and gracious. Of course, this is Canada being nice and polite goes with the territory. I had to return from mont -Tremblant to Montreal immediately right after the talk that same day on Friday so that I can make it back on the early flight back to Boston on the following Saturday morning. Montreal is a great city and one of my favorite near destinations from Boston. Anyway, that night in my hotel room alone, I figured I'll share a piece of the presentation with you and here it is. So why don't I just share with you a little part of the presentation from today? What I'm gonna do is instead of talking about something that I talked about today, I'm gonna to talk about something I didn't get a chance to talk about today because I just kind of ran out of time. And I'm just gonna have a little excerpt about CBCT technology. Now, as you know, I uh, about a year or so ago, I got a new unit, a CBCT unit, the, the Veraview X800 for the office. And I said to you guys that I was gonna make some videos on it and uh, kind of been incorporated in some of the cases that I have done but I just want to talk about the machine itself today just briefly because it really has been amazing. Now I've been using CPC technology since 2008 when we first got that at the school over at the Harvard we got one of the first machines in the city and so I had been referring cases to the school but uh, I finally decided that you know I do refer enough patients to the school that uh, would, the convenience of having it in the office would be far greater for me and that it would also allow me to take more CTs when I feel a syndicator rather than think the, the idea that I would have to send the patient out to the school which is going to be kind of a pain in the neck let's face the facts here so and also more importantly the reason I bought the unit was because I didn't want to charge the patients when I'm taking a uh, taking a CVCT and the reason for that is because I've always thought that the image is helping me I've never charged my patients for using microscope frankly because it helps me see better and uh, I feel the same way about the CVCT I'm just not very good at trying to sell a uh, an image to a patient which is probably not the way to think about it. For me, yeah, I, you know, if I have to convince a patient to go get a CBCT, it's a pain in the neck. I just take it because it helps me in those situations where it is indicated. Of course, I don't try to take it on every single patient that goes out there, but there are now, as I'm using it more and more, I'm realizing that in many cases, they really are helpful. In some cases, they're not. I mean, after having done, in my particular case, you know, over 25,000 cases, you kind of look at an X-ray, a periapical X-ray, and you know what the problems are, and uh, but still, CBCTs are extremely helpful, especially in cases 
of triaging and treatment planning for surgery versus revision, you know, non-surgical retreatment versus uh, surgery is, is, is incredibly helpful. Also, you get some information about the canal anatomy that is extremely helpful too, such as whether there is an, an MB2 in this particular case, or there is no MB2. If there is an MB2, does it join? If it's calcified, is it wide, is it not? Um, so lots of different applications there. Uh, this uh, very view is, is is great. I'm just going to share a case uh, from just the uh, you know not too long ago here, and it was this this uh, um, essentially this, this second molar that, as you can see under a crown, the crown had just been cemented. The patient ended up having a pulpitis. Patient came in late in the afternoon on a Friday to do the emergency treatment to get uh, him out of pain, but um, and we just figured we'll take a CBC to just see what kind of anatomy we have so we can do the treatment. And I just wanted to kind of showcase that you know how long it takes to take. A CT image once your assistant, your staff gets pretty fast at it. In this particular unit, the X800 uh, go up and down. This patient was pretty tall, so we ended up having him sit down. Uh, the key with taking these images is to have a patient that is completely still. What's nice about this particular X800 is that it allows you to take a very high quality pan to begin with, and then the assistant will scout the image to the location where you want to take it, and then it can almost do an auto exposure and take an additional rotation. It takes a little bit longer, but it'll give you much higher resolution. And you can see in just a few minutes, you've already had the image that pops up on the screen, and now it allows us to quickly, before we get in there and do our procedure, take a look at the image and I always try to get things aligned and we can talk about that I'll probably have a whole video on looking at CBCTs and interpretation but I always like to look at the axial section first and you can see here we're having two canals in the mesial and one canal on the distal the two mesial canals tend to join the apical third looking at the anatomy and you can see here from the coronal section on the left side that we do have some type of webbing going on towards the apical area but the, the canals do join and from the uh, sagittal section on the lower right, you can see that uh, you know the canals are fairly straightforward and so on. We can see the mental foramen uh, in relation to the apical area, and uh, you know the fact that uh, look here again on the left side from the coronal section, the, the the convergence of the roots. Now you could make the argument that look, this is information we can find clinically, but again in this particular case it may not be all that helpful. I want more to demonstrate the, how long does it take to take an image and then move on to interpret. But now I'm going to show you also the case itself. As usual, we always start from a preclinical um, PA radiograph from which we make our uh, estimated working length and then make an axis preparation through this uh, zirconia crown with our Duracut uh, burst from the real dendro axis kit. And now you can see the axis preparation. And of course, as usual, I always start by an orifice opener. Uh, but I know at this point I can make it um, fairly conservative access preparation so that I can find the canals and go in there and do the preparation and quickly do the coronal uh, crown down technique of after the orifice opener I use this protocol of 40 down to 20 40 down to 1504 taper and here as you can see I'm using the uh, endosync uh, plus with the apex locator and you can see in the mesials I know that these canals are going to join right at that length and I do a crown down from 40 down to uh, 215 get the length and then proceed to my apex location uh, and here I'm using the ultrasonic and just uh, lots of irrigation at the same time and this crown down protocol 40 down to 15 get the 40s finally to the apex and uh, this is a whole irrigation uh, uh, device that I'm going to talk to you guys uh, soon about that uh, I have developed and it's not out yet but it's a very interesting way of adding negative pressure to your irrigation protocols and the minimal waste tips here with the 4004 cementing the cones into place and searing off at the RFS level or one millimeter above the RFS level doing hydraulic condensation and here we have just took an x-ray with the cone in place and uh, sealer and now complete the hydraulic condensation on all the canals and you can see the mesials uh, there and the distal and then place the BC liner now instead of bulk filling all the way to the top for this particular practitioner we just put in a layer of a canal cap then put a cotton spacer and a cap on top of it and the patient ends up seeing the doctor for the next step and you can see the post-op here is a pretty conventional type of a case you have canal joining but that information I had in advance I quickly knew where to look for for the case for the for the canals and how to treat get to the large enough apical diameter and get things done so kind of a simple straightforward case 
uh, that does show you how we kind of quickly get the information for this emergency patient, which is coming at the end of the day. We managed to do the case in one visit very quickly, knowing what we're dealing with by going in there and just basically uh, 30 minutes get the, the work uh, done and completed for him, send him, send it back to his referring dentist to fill the access and the crown. So this kind of shows us the power of the information that we gain from CBCTs. Of course, at the same time, we have the Alara uh, type of principles in terms of trying to reduce the exposure to the patient. But at the same time, we know that some of these modern CTs, because of the resolution of the sensors and the focal cone uh, radiation being very, um, very much limited and concentrated, <clears throat> we're not getting uh, too much um, scatter and that it, it is as, as much as possible, it's as safe as possible for the patient and uh, I don't feel uncomfortable uh, recommending this to patients in situations in which is going to help me get more information that I can then uh, apply clinically so I can render a more effective and hopefully also a more efficient treatment plan and treatment for the patients. So this is a quick little video I wanted to make for you to show this uh, X800's uh, application in my practice. I, I would love to kind of get into some of the nooks and crannies of the software for you because that's very important. Knowing how to interpret this image is really key and I feel like a lot of people don't have that ability now. Luckily as I've kind of, as you guys know from the past, I've, I've taught the head and neck anatomy course at the Harvard Medical School for a number of years as a senior tutor. I was there and doing all the lab dissections. So knowing the anatomy is the number one thing and of course knowing pathology and known radiology combine them together and will allow you to be able to get um, the most information from uh, a CBCT that you can use as a uh, source of information for uh, your interpretation of the images to come up with a much better uh, differential diagnosis before treatment planning a patient for treatment. All right, so that's pretty much it. So I'm coming to you from my hotel room right now here in Montreal. I'm heading back to Boston tomorrow morning at this morning's talk uh, with this uh, wonderful group of people out in the uh, Canadian Academy of Endodontists. Uh, was uh, was very nice, very good. And uh, I tried something uh, kind of crazy, which was to film three cases that I did two days ago in the clinic and then kind of apply, use those, and I ended up having to edit that all day long for the past two days, so to put it together for this morning's presentation. And uh, so that was kind of a, something I'm probably not gonna do again because it just took so much of my time. Okay, I hope this little excerpt on CBCT technology and its use was helpful to you. I have benefited greatly from the increased use of CBCT technology in my own personal private practice. I've been using this technology since 2008, but referring my patients to the school, at the Harvard Dental School, which we had a machine, one of the first um, schools to uh, acquire and, uh, and, and put together this, uh, this system, but having it close by has been truly beneficial to my patients' convenience. As many of you know, I believe that treatment planning and case selection is our number one source of success in endodontics. And since treatment planning is based on diagnosis and since CBCT imaging improves our diagnostic ability, it's logical to infer that CBCTs have increased and indirectly improved our clinical success rates. Now, you don't have to have a physical machine in your office, but you should have access to one and be able to strategically use it in cases where treatment planning is crucial. For example, you know, in, in, in triaging non-surgical or surgical cases for failed endo cases, whether you should treat them non-surgically or surgically, it all depends on a number of factors that are not clear from a regular parapical radiograph and a CBCT and a three-dimensional image would be increasingly and incredibly helpful for that specific situation. Now, I will definitely spend more time in the future videos talking about the details of case planning, image acquisition and interpretation and all the relevant factors to this topic. But until then, I'm Ali Nesset and let's save some teeth.